Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Caffeine for the Soul. Today I want to continue the theme of what is Caffeine for the Soul by exploring the relationship between the sacred and the profane. One of, one of my favorite stories is a minister, Tony Campolo, and, and he delivered a famous sermon, and it began like this. I have three things I'd like to say today. First, while you were sleeping last night, 30,000 kids died of starvation or diseases related to malnutrition. Second, most of you don't give a shit. What's worse is that you're more upset with the fact that I said shit than the fact that 30,000 kids died last night. One of the things that often happens when I teach is I swear. I swear like a sailor. Now, it's interesting because I don't particularly swear in my personal life, but when I'm teaching and when I'm coaching, I notice things come out of my mouth. And it's not play acting. It's just something that seems to come from, I think, my training in primal drivers. When I used to teach NLP, we learned about primal drivers, that there are certain things that people are so attuned to that it it wakes them up at a primal level. And they're usually to do with sex, and they're usually to do with food, and they're usually to do with just really basic drives. And swearing seems to wake up those primal drivers. Well, What's interesting is I also talk an awful lot about spirit and I talk an awful lot about God and people aren't used to hearing shit and God in the same sentence. They're not used to hearing the sacred and the profane bandied about quite so freely in the same room. And I get complaints. And what's interesting is I get complaints both ways. So I recently, I, I, I did a, a video. You can, you can watch all sorts of videos on the Caffeine for the Soul part of the michaelneal.org website. And, and I did a video that was representative of a moment that changed my daughter's life. And it was a training that I was doing in New York. And my, my teenage daughter was having a lot of troubles. And we pulled her out of school and we homeschooled her. And she came on the road with me. And she was sitting in on a seminar because I put her to work running the soundboards in my seminars just to kind of keep her busy. And, and one day, I was teaching a group. And I said to the group, you are the infinite creative potential of the entire fucking universe. Deal with it which my daughter thought was so brilliant and profound that she immediately tweeted it out with the quote marks and the hashtag, my dad. Well, that really opened her up to this conversation. It, it woke something up in her that allowed her to listen and to begin to hear something about her true nature, something about the spiritual nature of all people the driving force, the divine force inside us. And so I shared a video clip of that and I got some very upset emails from people who were very upset that I could talk about something so sacred and and pervert it with the use of foul language. And I remember one particular one of these emails was from a a clearly very sincere woman. And and I wrote her back and I, I apologized. And in fact, we did dub over the swear word. So it just kind of goes of the entire universe and <laughs> it lost some of the impact for me, but, but we stayed in dialogue because I think she appreciated the way that I listened to her instead of just defending myself against her. And, and, and we, we've become quite friendly. And then recently I posted a video in caffeine for the soul called, do they know that they're God? And I got more complaints about that video than I did about the one where I swore. And it was really interesting because she noticed that and my hat was off to her because she took the time to write to me and to say, you know what? You told me that more people got upset when you said God than when you said fuck. And, <laughs> and, and it's true. But, but here's the thing. If we don't recognize that spirituality is a constant It has nothing to do with the language we use. It has nothing to do with the life we live. It is a different 
plane of being. It is a different plane of existence. Then we're caught up in the illusion that only some things are spiritual and others are not. That there is no God in this, there is only God in that. And if God is, if there is a spiritual basis to the universe, it is everywhere. It is in everything. It is literally what we are made of. And if not, not which means that God is as present in the sacred as in the profane. Spirit is as present in me when I'm drinking and watching television as when I'm walking in the mountains in awe at nature, as when I'm sitting in a church listening to a sermon, as when I'm sitting in a coffee shop drinking my third cappuccino of the day. There's a wonderful Zen story that I've always loved of a thief who's interrupted in the act of thievery by a monk. And he runs away when the monk comes into his home. And he's, he's, he's carrying a, a sack of all the monk's goods with him. And the monk chases after him, and he's waving a shoe in his hand. And the thief runs and runs, but this monk is fit, right? And he catches the thief. And the thief, you know, puts his hands up and, and hands the monk the bag and is ready to be beaten. And, and the monk goes, no, 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 and hands him the bag of stuff and hands him the shoe and says, you forgot this. You, you, you're not going to get very far with only one. And, and the thief is so moved by the monk's equanimity that he decides that he too wants to become a monk. He wants to learn the ways of Zen. And in time... He becomes enlightened. He sees the divine nature of all life. And when his followers, because by then he has followers, ask him, well, what are you going to do now that you're enlightened? Where are you going to go to teach? He says, oh, I think I'm going to go back to being a thief. And when they say, well, how can you do that? You're a great spiritual master. He says, well, everyone's got to do something. It's very easy to get caught up in the form of spirituality and totally miss the formless nature of spirit. Probably the most beautiful way I've, I've heard that expressed is in the words of David Bohm, which I, I, I quote in the Inside Out Revolution. And in fact, he asked to have read at his funeral. And he said, the field of the finite is all that we can see, hear, touch, remember, and describe. This field is basically that which is manifest or tangible. The essential quality of the infinite, by contrast, is its subtlety, its intangibility. This quality is conveyed in the word spirit, whose root meaning is wind or breath. This suggests an invisible but pervasive energy to which the manifest world of the finite responds. This energy, or spirit, infuses all living things, and without it any organism must fall apart into its constituent elements. That which is truly alive in living systems is this energy of spirit, and this is never born and never dies. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.